Hello everybody and welcome to this video on the conversion between infix and postfix notation. We're going to be looking at the most common method for this which would be to use a stack data structure. So before we look at the method of conversion between these two, we need to have a brief overview of what they actually are. So infix is a lot easier for humans to read and it's whereby the operators are written in between the operands. Postfix, on the other hand, is whereby the operators are written after the corresponding operands. And this is a lot easier for computers to read. It removes the need for parentheses. It also removes the need for precedence rules and associativity rules, which makes it a lot easier for computers to understand. So for our infix expression, we're going to have four possibilities for the character that's under consideration. So if the character is an operand, then we are simply just going to move that operand from the infix expression to the postfix expression. If the character is an opening bracket, then we're going to push that opening bracket onto the top of the stack. Now, if the character is a closing bracket, then we're going to pop everything from the stack up to the opening bracket as shown here, and then we're just going to move that onto the postfix expression. I'm going to explain about if we encounter operators in the next slide. Basically, if we have an operator, we're going to want to pop from the stack until seeing one of these three possible options. So an, another operator of lower or equal precedence. So for example, if the operator under consideration was a plus, then we'd pop from the stack until we saw a plus or a minus. Another stopping condition would be an opening bracket. And then the final stopping condition would be if the stack was completely empty. So now that we're aware of the four possibilities for our character under consideration, we can look at the conversion as a whole from infix to postfix. So our first character here is the open brackets symbol. So we can move this to the top of the stack by pushing it to the stack. The next character is the number six, an operand. So we can move that straight from the infix notation to the postfix notation. We then have the plus operator, and that's going to be pushed onto the current top of the stack. The number four operand is going to move over to the postfix notation. Now, this is where it gets interesting with our closed bracket. Now, with the closed bracket, we're going to look for its corresponding opening bracket and pop everything from the stack up to that opening bracket. So in this example, we're going to be popping the plus operator and we're going to be then moving that over to the postfix notation. The next character we have is the multiply operator. So we're going to be moving the multiply operator onto the top of the stack. And the last character in our infix notation is the operand number five. So that's just going to move over to our postfix. Now that we've looked at all the characters in the infix notation, we can just pop everything that we have left on the stack and move this over to the postfix notation. If we have an opening bracket, then we don't need to move this over to the postfix notation. Otherwise, that would defeat the purpose of having the postfix notation in the first place. So we're just going to pop from the stack and we're going to move the multiply symbol to the postfix notation. And then we're going to clear the stack as we only have the open bracket left so the stack can be used elsewhere. We now have a slightly more complicated example. So we have the open bracket again at the start. So we're going to push that onto the top of the stack. The operand 56 is just going to move over to postfix. The operator plus is going to move onto the top of the stack pushed there. And then the operand 12 is going to move over to the postfix notation. We're going to look for the corresponding opening brackets and then pop the plus 
operator to the postfix notation, so like so. Then the multiply operator is going to be pushed onto the top of the stack. We're then going to move the three operands over to the postfix notation. Now this is a case of precedence rules, so we're going to be popping from the stack until we see a opening bracket in this case. The multiply symbol isn't actually going to affect it in this case because it is of higher precedence and we only pop up until we see a closing condition if the precedence of the operator under consideration is of a lower precedence or is of equal precedence. So we'd only not pop anything from the stack if this was a plus or a minus operator. However, it's a multiply operator. So that means we are going to pop from the stack and we are going to pop the multiply off and move it over to the postfix notation. We're then going to push the minus operator onto the top of the stack. And then finally, for our last character in the infix notation, we're going to move that over to the postfix notation. We have now looked at all the characters in the infix notation, so we're going to pop all of the characters off the stack. So that would be the minus character. The open bracket character that we've seen before isn't going to be used for the postfix notation, so we can just clear the stack and then we have completed the conversion. So in addition to this, I wanted to look at how we can evaluate our postfix notation after we've converted it using a stack. So there would only be two types of characters for the postfix notation, either operands or operators. So if we see an operand, then we just need to push that onto the top of the stack. If we see an operator, then we know there'll be at least two operands currently in the stack. So we're going to want to pop those operands out of the stack, like so. And we're going to operate using the operator that we've seen to give an answer. For example, 7 times 3, 21. We're then going to push that new resulting operand back into the stack. And that's what we do for operands and operators. So now that we're aware of these two rules, we can apply these two full examples of how we evaluate postfix notation. So if we look at this top example here, we have the first operand, which will be the number six. We're going to move that and push it onto the top of the stack. We then have the second operand, which will be four. We're also going to push that onto the top of the stack. Our next character is the plus operator, so we're going to move that across and we're going to pop off from the stack our two operands, four and six. We're going to use the operator to give us six plus four, which is equal to ten. We're then going to move ten back onto the top of the stack. Our next character under consideration is the operand 5, which will be pushed on top of the stack. And then we have the multiply operator, which we are going to move across for our next operation. As we pop the two operands off of the stack, we can then give 50 as our answer. We then push this back onto the top of the stack and that is our final answer of the postfix notation. Looking at this slightly more complicated example, we have 56 which will go onto the top of the stack as well as 12, both being operands. We'll then operate on these two with the plus operator. So we're going to do 12 plus 56. And that's going to give us 68. 68 will be pushed back onto the top of the stack. Our next character under consideration is 3. So 3 is going to move onto the top of the stack. We're then going to look across to the next character. This is the times operator. So we're going to 
move that across and we're going to operate on the two operands currently in the stack at the top 68 and 3 68 times 3 gives us 204 we're then going to move 4 our operand onto the top of the stack we then have our last operator which is the minus symbol and we're going to pop from the stack twice to give us the 4 and the 204 we're then going to complete this final operation to give us 200 which is the final answer and we have evaluated the postfix notation finally i've created some code in java which takes infix notation as its input and provides the corresponding postfix notation as its output it also provides a useful view of the steps the stack takes during the conversion and that concludes this video thank you for watching